Sharks versus the Warriors. The, sh- the Warriors beat the Sharkies 30 to 28. And what a buzz- what a crazy game. Looked like it was done and dusted. The Sharkies looked clinical. It looked like, you know what, almost a masterstroke, this Hines um, Trindle combination. Granted, I know Hines was named at six. I didn't really see them play that much different than they usually do. If I had to be picky, maybe Hines does sit out on that right edge a little bit more than he used to, to a degree, but that could be just because he's coming back. But yeah, it looked like a clinical win. Uh, Trindle with some beautiful try assists, and then obviously Hines coming into his own as well. And then all of a sudden, you know, just some momentum change, and the Warriors got their tails up, and they just could not be stopped. I have to be honest, just like last week with the terrible call against the Warriors, you know, first of all, let me be clear, this is not saying that this is why the Warriors won. This is not to put blame on the Warriors, anything like that. But I have to be honest, just because the Warriors got a tough call last week doesn't mean that the Sharks should get a ridiculous call this week. The Ido 10 in the bin was some of the most bizarre refing I've ever seen because it actually wasn't, if I recall correctly what they were saying, it actually wasn't about the fact that it was high. It was the fact that there was a, it was a repeat offence. Do you guys hear the same thing? Yep. And so what I'm not understanding is, is repeat offences were basically put in place because it was almost intentional slash professional. Mm. How the hell is trying to make a try saver while someone is slipping over an intentional penalty where it deserves a guy to go 10 in the bin? As I said, this is not the reason why the Warriors won. The Warriors won because the Sharks let go a 22 to four margin. That's, that's why. However, that's outrageous. An outrageous call where Ido is getting sent 10 in the bin, not for the head high where the guy was slipping, for a repeat infringement. What is it? It's, he's doing a try-saving tackle. How is there anything intent there when it comes to being a professional foul? Makes no sense to me. And you try and add context to try and make it make sense after, but the more you think about it, the less it makes sense. Like, yeah, the, re- the getting sent 10 in the bin for repeat offences was because it was a, essentially a professional foul. Mm. That's why you would do it. How is that a professional... Yep. He's making a try saving tackle. Um, absolutely bizarre. Anyway, so I've got to be fair with that. However, that's not why the Sharkies lost. The Sharkies lost because they got complacent. They were ahead by a lot and they allowed that. Um, but they were robbed of a fair opportunity because I thought that was an outrageous call. Um, but the Warriors, their ability, once they got that tail up and that roll on, an incredible finish by the Warriors. And what a moment. Sean Johnson, I tell you what against his old club when he left the club it looked like career done to a degree like almost you know okay sj's on his last legs goes back there in the final moment throws the cutout ball to win the game absolutely incredible yeah i uh <laughs> like i would imagine even as a sharkies fan out of that game that have to be like awful you lost sucks it could cost you you know a home final or whatever but fuck just to be there for that moment of sj i think that's his last touch in the nrl Mm. To set up a match-winning trial like that, it's like you're out there. That must have been sensational. It was incredible. It was such a special night. We were sort of mentioned at the top of the show, but it was on the hill, 20 metres away from where he threw that pass. We'll always have that as SJ's last touch. Well, technically his last touch was the, uh, the missed kick from the side. <laughs> <laughs> but, and the Sharkies, it was weird. Like, for what could have been a really detrimental loss for the Sharks and potentially pushed them out of a top four position, results went their way, so it wouldn't, it hasn't resulted that way. But the whole night was just so special and there wasn't any, like, oh, SJ used to play for us at, uh, and any bitter feelings about the exit and all that. Everyone was just seemed so happy for Sean Johnson. Of course, there was upset Sharks fans about the result, but there was this underlying... We just witnessed one of the greats of rugby league go out on those terms. So it, it was a it was a special night. You know what I love too about like all of his plays in this game? Like to me, the first try he set up for Luke Metcalf, that was almost like old SJ. Mm. And then the tries at the back end, they were, you know, the more recent yeah. SJ. Like, like, like that kick that he put in early, like at 20, he couldn't have done that. He couldn't have even considered that. He could yeah. do everything else on the planet except that. And you just got to see the whole range of it from SJ, which... Uh, Oh, I just thought it was tremendous. Yeah, and I think like SJ has become so loved at the back end of his career. You've got to remember like it wasn't always that way yep. for SJ. It was the typical young superstar. Everyone loves him. Okay, now everyone hates him. I mean, to be honest, a bit like the situation Nico's going through right now. First couple of years where he's the leader at the Sharks, everyone loves him. And because everyone loves him, now all of a sudden he's the cool guy to hate. It's like 
when Nico has done nothing wrong. Like literally, like you couldn't ask for a better bloke in Nico and yet he's the easy target. Um, and it's similar to SJ. SJ had never done anything wrong, never foot, put a foot wrong. But there was a period of his career where it was just easy to hate on SJ. Like just, I mean, he remember on the podcast, he was talking about when he won the golden boot and how much hate he got because oh, he won the golden wow. boot. Um, and so what, what a... What a perfect way to finish his career. Just a reminder of how much this guy's given us, how many young Kiwis and young Aussies and young whoever watched SJ coming through and said, you know what, I love this game because of that bloke. Just a beautiful ending. And like another, like there was questions for a period there, like, you know, SJ, can he ice games? And initially he could and he was the star and then he went through a bit of a rough patch where he struggled to ice games and you're almost a bit nervous for him. It's like, nah, surely he's not going to be able to do this in the final moments of his games. And that final moment was an encapsulation of how mature he is mentally now and, and strong he is mentally to not allow it to rattle him and just go bang, just in the breadbasket try time. I'll tell you what too, like, like there's a million on-field highlights we can talk about with SJ, mate. I always go back to during COVID when the game got put into lockdown and they interviewed him straight after that game. And they, he, he, he didn't know he was going into lockdown yet. And they told him live, you have to leave your family, you have to go to this. And do you remember how well he handled that moment? Mm. Like it was, I, like that was his world falling in mm. in that split second. And I, I just thought it was just such a mature response to it. And uh, to look at his career from where he started to where he finished and what he's done and the person he is throughout the whole thing. It's been, and I'll be the first one to say, like the year he won the Daily M, I didn't think he'd make it through first grade that year. I genuinely didn't. At the start of the season, I was like, I, I think it's done. You nearly won the Dalian. <laughs> nearly won the Dalian, sorry, yeah. But like, I personally didn't have him finish the season in first grade at the yep. start of the year. It sounds crazy now, but that's the sort of spot he was in. The resurgence yeah. was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. It is one of the, like, don't get me wrong, I'm stoked that Ponga won it, but it is one of the tough to swallow, knowing that I really did feel like SJ was the best player for the whole season. Um but I was with you, mate. SJ, for me, I was talking in the trial. I remember his first trial back and he kicked the ball out in the full and his kicking game was all over the place. And I'm going, geez, like, has SJ gone a year too long? He didn't even look confident in yeah. himself at that time. And then he just went bang, bang, bang. Yeah. In his last game, this is his last outing. Three try assists, 25 runs, 176 metres, three tackle breaks, two line breaks, a line break assist, uh, nine tackles, no errors, 503 kicking metres. I loved his best mates, who's who's one of the social media guys there, uh, Logan Dodds, I believe it is. He posted just a screenshot of a text message to SJ before the game. Just give us one more SJ moment. Fucking unreal. Oh, so good. Um, I thought Adam Fanor Blake was outstanding. And jeez, if you're a Sharkies fan, this Sharky side with Adam Fanor Blake in it, I'm excited. I'm very excited, especially with this forward pack. I know they died off in the last 20 minutes, but this forward pack, they're starting to realise, like, find their... You know, heading into this year, a lot of their forwards hadn't even played 100 NRL games. They're now getting into that period of their career where they've played 120 games. They're getting confident in their ability. Then you're adding Adam Fanul Blake onto this. Just exciting. Yeah, I thought he was outstanding. He had 12, 22 runs, 211 metres, 111 post-contact, four tackle breaks, 25 tackles, three offloads. The best sign for Sharkies fans was mid-year when he'd signed and... There's like rumours, I was going to say reports, let's say rumours of him, you know, maybe an early exit. He's going to leave before the, the June 30 deadline and go to the Sharks. How's this all going to play out? And you just thought, like, you know, if the Warriors season done, a fair way out from the season, not being able to make uh, finals football, how's AFB going to respond? Is he going to have the same attitude, the same effort? Every single week from there on out, he went out there as if it was like his last game and he ran for his 200 metres and he played big minutes. He never at any point was like, mm, I've got nothing left to achieve here. We're done for the season. Yeah. Re it's a credit to AFB and very <laughs> exciting for the Sharks. Um, totally agree, mate. Because also like you'd have to suggest that like the reason why he's leaving is because he's, he's got personal reasons. So he would probably want to leave immediately. Mm. Like, and the fact that he spent the whole year there and done his best to give his best... Like that's that's a testament to AFB. Like very, it's very hard to stay focused each week when you got personal stuff going back home that you can't sort out. Um, another guy, just quickly before we move to the Sharks, uh, Lawatia, when the game was on the line, didn't he just take another step up? Holy shit! He had uh, 14 runs, 172 meters, 59 post contact. He had 10 tackle breaks and a line break. 10 tackles, zero misses. I cannot wait to see this guy in first grade for a long period of time. He is so talented. The He's game was on the line, and he said, "Give me the ball." Without Leotawa, that SJ doesn't have his moment. That no line way. break gave him the opportunity. Yeah. Jeez, like 12, uh, what was it, 10 tackle breaks in centre as a rookie? 
But he's also like, and we've seen it like not just this game, but over the last few weeks, like he can just beat you in so many ways. Soft hands, everything. He ticks a lot of boxes. <laughs> I cannot wait. I don't want to get too excited because we've always seen like young, exciting warriors come outside backs come through. But far out. It's hard not to get excited with this player. He, he was the one that were in Canberra last year and he, he did his hammy ten minutes into his debut. Remember we yeah, spoke to yeah. we spoke to his family after the yeah. game and they were just devastated. He's got such a big career ahead of him. Um yeah, so awesome stuff from the Warriors. Let's get into the Sharkies, shall we? Strangely enough, I I know it's disappointing. I actually I'm actually confident that the Sharkies can go one win a, win a finals game. I think they can. I think they can. The one stat, Kempi, the Warriors completed at ninety five percent. They went forty one from forty three yeah. in SJ's farewell. Crazy, crazy. And I just think that like the fact that they put them to the sword for like sixty minutes. And it was such a dominant win. I don't know. I, I, I'm liking the Sharkies. I know it sounds stupid. I don't think they get enough appreciation for what they've managed to achieve in the last few years. I think they look like a much better side at this period of the year than last year. Last year, they were almost, they slid off a cliff. Then they were almost hanging on to dear life. And I think it was that left edge they were trying to sort out. We're not heading into, I know they lost, but we're not walking into this um, final series going, their left edge is a disaster. Mm -hmm. We're really looking at them going, the biggest question is they've got three halves and all of them playing some good footy. Um, look, I, I really like what I'm seeing. The only question is the Trindle-Hines combination. Can it click? Look pretty good on the weekend. It, i, I got to eat my words. Like I thought that you'd probably go Anderson-Hines. If they can play like this each week, I, maybe it is the right way to go. Maybe Hines, maybe Trindle is a seven and Hines can be a six. I'm still... I'm not fully on board with it, but, you know, Trindle was pretty bloody good on the weekend and so was Hines, in my opinion. Yeah, and I, man, I think that's what makes it so tough. We didn't learn anything new. We know they're both bloody good footballers. It's mm. just a matter of getting it all sorted before they... I personally think for this game in particular, mate, I reckon if this is round 22, the Sharkies win this game. I just think the emotion of SJ and everything got the Warriors over the line light. And, and you know, wasn't the reason why they won and a tough call in a, you know... Yeah. Key period of the game obviously didn't help their cause. There was a bit in it, yeah. The other boys, no Ramian, no Muli Talo, no Sifa Talakai, three key blokes in this in this side that they're all strong. Well, Ramian's come back from suspension. They're three blokes who could all come back into the side this week. So, yeah, I, I actually really like what I'm seeing um, at the Sharkies. I think that they... I think that they can win a finals game. I really do. I think they look much better than they did last year. I, I think this Shark side plays... The last year's Shark side at this period of time, I reckon this Shark side would beat them 13 plus. I well, really do. They are looking looking like they'll play Melbourne probably week one of finals, barring upsets this weekend. They've beaten Melbourne. They beat Melbourne in Melbourne without Nico and Trindle. Yep. Who knows? And also all those boys we just mentioned, like they are, their form has been getting better and better as the year has gone on. So I know, as I said, disappointing, but I tell you, I like what I'm seeing at the Sharkies. I really do. You add Adam Fanua Blake into this side, who knows what's going to happen with Atkinson? Like, you know, does he play centre or whatever? There was one period where he just, I think it was like a kick chase or something. It was an effort play and you're like, that's why he's in this side, Atkinson. Yeah. He just makes things happen. So I don't know how you fit him in the side. Do you find a spot on the bench? Because we know Craig Fitzgibbons, he always has liked that 4-4 bench rotation. I've always, I don't know if they need it because they've got a lot of forwards who can play big minutes. You can run with three of them. Do you reckon they'll find a spot for him on the bench this week or not? I think so, and I think Jack Williams will make way because unfortunately he had a Barry. Jack Williams. I'd, I I'd be your finding man. a spot for him. But Jack Williams, mate, that drop ball. You, lost him to, like, you watch your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> mate, two, like, crucial. That last drop ball was. It was sacrilege. a shocker. We've all dropped balls in the last, mate. <laughs> um, hell. You I'm dropped the ball bloody high and guru. <laughs> <laughs> here we um, are. Unfortunately, he had a really good game a couple of weeks ago, but he's had a couple of not great games, and I think probably Jack Williams is where they make way for Atkinson on that. And game. you know what was disappointing? Like, we've spoken before. I've been critical of Jack previously. I feel like he'd started to get that out of his game. Mm. I, th I feel like he'd improved out of sight this mm. year. So it was a little bit disappointing. That was a shocker, that drop. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so in regards to performances, I, I really think they're all, like, uh, Nicola has had such a good back end of the season. Teague Wilton's been better. Um, Brayley over the last month. Oh, mate. Brayley over the last month has been phenomenal. Phenomenal. And, and so what I like about the Sharks is you're seeing Fitzgibbon's plan come to fruition of this, like, each year develop, get better, get better, get better. And do, do we all agree that this Shark side's the best version of Fitzgibbon since taking over, or do you feel mm. there's another year they've been better? 
Um, I, I'm sort of a foot in it, just because I'm not convinced on the halves yet, but I, I can see where you're coming from, for sure. Mm. I like them. I really do. I think there's just very few cracks in their game. Are they good enough to go all the way to a premiership or even make a grand final? I don't know yet, mm. but I look at that team and I just I see very few cracks. I, I think pre- they could make a prelim. I Absolutely they, they could. Um, win a comp, I think that... Uh, not Definitely wouldn't put a line through them, but they wouldn't be... I'm not here to say that like they're not in the top tier with your Melbournes at yep. the moment. Uh, however, I think that they can definitely get to a prelim this year. And and once they get that finals win off their back, the confidence they might have is just they just need to get that one. Yeah, just, just that monkey one off the back and yeah. and then they're good to go. So uh, like even a guy like Rudolph, I think has improved dramatically over the last few weeks. Uh, ever since AFB signed, he's been great. Yeah. So you know Trindle, some of that uh, just getting to that line and holding the ball up and just hitting that short line it doesn't get utilized enough in my mm-hmm. opinion in, in uh, footy these days and just just holding it to the very very last second and like i think a lot of people think i don't know about you boys but they think oh, i don't rate trindle I, I rate trindle a lot like i've always been a fan of trindle it's just the combination in which that i don't know where everyone lands now like it's weird to say Hines is not a seven when he won a Dally M from seven. <laughs> However, look, if Hines at six is how you get the best out of their combination and how you get the best out of their team, I've got nothing against it. Boom, put him there. Like, but I, again, I just don't know. Like, I, I, what, I, what I am kind of sure of is I don't know if Trindle's a six. Mm. I think he needs to be the man. Similar to Sam Walker, that has grown up being a number seven, the main guy, and once you put him in six, it almost just throws him off a little bit. I think that Trindle is an out and out seven. I mean, if you listen to this every week and you think we don't rate Trindle, you're not listening. <laughs> yeah, we rate him highly. Trust me. It's just just the fact that Atkinson is Hines yep. and all that. 